Welcome to Late Night News. This week we shine the spotlight on Parliament. Me, I go to gym. I have a membership, me. David Kabuka goes to Hong Kong. Hub health or traffic fire. Hub health or traffic fire. We take a look at Jealous Malema's new political organization. EFF. We're waiting for your EFT. And Mr. Chester Missing interviews. Tony Aaron Ruff. I am the Chester Missing of Late Night News. You are the Chester Missing of Kasatu. Pretty much, pretty much. La, la. Don't go anywhere. During the financial turmoil of the last past month, we thought that the president would have soothed the country's economic fears and explained how he was going to make sure the RAND stabilized. But hey, you know who you're dealing with, and this is what went down. How is the economy? <laughs> well, basically what he's trying to say is, how the hell am I going to be responsible for something I know nothing about? Our mom is the president. But at the budget debate in parliament two weeks ago, we expected him to clarify our current economic plight. But he proceeded to tell us that he needed uh, about two billion nyana just to keep the presidency going. Hmm? You know, tipex for Mark Maharaji, a stapler for Trevor Manuel, and jet food to get to Zimbabwe when you have a meeting with the, with the old Bob Mugabe. After that, Lindy Omazubuku came out, and in Lindy Omazubuku fashion, she tore into the president, hmm? listing his failures on the economic front. Hmm? And while this was all going on, Jeff Hadde was on Twitter, Baba, tweeting hard. Jacob, Jacob, two billion. Our WTF, Jacob. Parliament is great, great. Mshalo is doing yours. LOL. <laughs> The RAND's fall showed that the markets have reached the same conclusion that the rest of South Africa reached some time ago. They have no confidence in the President of the Republic. Basically what she's saying on behalf of the white people is that the weak RAND is going to make it very difficult for them to buy expensive coffee when they're on holiday in London. Brother, you gotta slum it up, brother. Get it, get it plate, brother. Right, God and read. It's so nice, brother. But instead of the ANC replying with insightful defense, like saying the weak rand should make our exports more competitive and make South Africa a more affordable destination, Putin Manamela decided to take it there. And by there, I mean like there. Honorable Lindy Wamasibuko has bad fashion taste and has been arrest arrested by the police, by the fashion police, blame Zuma. So everything must be blamed on Zuma. Now, South Africa... I like to make fun of people as much as the next guy. But isn't this parliament, isn't this meant to be the place where we have meaningful debate? Essentially, these are the grown-ups of our country. You, you would have thought the MPs would have come out and said, hey, my booty, hey, booty, way. This is uncalled for, rebuked him. No, that's not what happened. They decided to do what? Pour more petrol in the fire. ANC MP John Jeffrey said Mazabuko was a person of substantial weight, adding that her stature is questionable. I don't get this John, this John Jeffrey's guy, huh? Look at our president. Not one skinny wife. Not one. Not a super, none of them are supermodels. John Jeffries, you are being genetically discriminative. Eh? You can't just say, you know us as the brothers. We like how things round. For instance, in Kenya, eh? all the people are thin, all. All you've never seen, you've never seen a, a fat Maasai, have you? No, no, exactly. It's like saying, why are all these white people so light skinned? Because they are white, Baba man. If there's one thing comrades have learned, insults speak louder than words. Where policy fails, hating prevails. When last did we go to gym? We are just one step away to Kruger National Park. I see elephants here, cows, all sorts of animals. You know, some people here are quiet now. Like the Honorable Minister, no severe my peace and my goal. But you weren't quiet in the kitchen when they did not have pork chops. You are going on. I think it's time that our parliamentarians hugged, talked through their problems, and actually we found there is therapy for these angry people in Parliament. Take a look at this. It's available. It's a service that's available. Okay. It's important to remember, guys, that this is a safe space. 
a place of reconciliation where we can work through our issues and really learn to be more productive in our everyday lives. Who'd like to go first? I would like to say ladies first. What? You see, things like this get me worked up. Why? Why should we adhere to the old school notion of ladies first? Uh uh, I refuse. Okay, could everybody please just calm down, deep breath. <sighs> Honorable Madeline Gozi, would you like to go first, please? I think I will. You see, we as men are living in a world that is masculated by women's lip nonsense thing. You know, a woman can shout at you and say things to you, and you can't answer back because people are going to start throwing things around, words around like you are a sexist, you know? You feel defeated when these things happen. And it needs to stop that thing. Like that girl, uh, that DA girl, Lindwema Sibu. Did you see what she was wearing? I wanted to ask, exact, my baby, how much do you charge an hour? That's what I wanted to ask me. What? Hey? Are you seriously gonna let him speak like this? Hey, Baba, in 2013, a woman can dress the way she wants without pebbles like you throwing some who, nonsense. Who, who are you calling her pebbles? thoughts. Who are you calling a pervert? You uh, say, you need to calm down. Ah, uh, so nyanyi si we vyan bluma, au zuta te vodro. Di akanda, ge mna se sin di akanda. Ine, zama, 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 zama. Please, let's remember why we're here. Let's remember why we're here. Please have a seat. Okay, okay. Honorable Madeline Gozi, when you called um, Honorable Celeste a cow, during um, the debate about the implementation of the NDP, what were you really trying to say? Oh, do you think he's going to answer you? It's because he didn't have answers. Ask him now. You see Ask what him I mean? what, you see what, what I mean? happened to the budget of the implementation policy? What happened? Ask him. I've got no words, me. You see, no answer. Because what? This, no answer. That's it. Obviously, you move on to people calling people's cow. All right, can we conclude the session? I uh, think we need to. With the reconciliatory hug, I find it brings a lot that of closure. Will never happen. No, no. That will never happen. Too soon, babe, ne? Too soon or not too soon, that will never happen. Well, those are the people you voted for, South Africa. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back after the break with David Kabuka, who's in Hong Kong. We discuss Julius Malema's new political party. And Chester Missing interviews Tony Ehrenreich. Find us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, send us emails. We'll see you shortly. Welcome back. We now cross over to our international correspondent, David Kabuka, who's in Hong Kong. Dave, what's happening there? A 29-year-old American called Edward Snowden hacked into the U.S. government's computers and stole classified secrets. Now he's hiding out in Hong Kong, and 99% of Americans think that he's wrong. So if he goes back to America, he'll be in big trouble. That's the big advantage of America, Loy. The whole country has one moral code. What do you mean? South Africa's problem is we have very diverse groups of people, and each group has a different moral code. Like in South Africa, some people think that you can have as many wives as you want while other people think that it's morally wrong to have more than one wife. Even with things like corruption, our views are not 100% the same. Anyway, we can be diverse. You know why, Dave? Because the Constitution tells us what's wrong and what's right. Tell me one thing that's in our Constitution. Uh, Nobody knows what's in the Constitution. I can tell you what's in the Constitution. I have a right to be gay and I have the right to be silent. Not that I'm gay myself. I'm just saying you have the right. Anyway, and not everyone had a say in the Constitution. Like, we still have traditional leaders, but there's confusion about what exactly their role is. The mere fact that you have a president means that you should have gotten over having kings and queens. But South Africa has a president, and we still have a Zulu king, a Griko king, a Mpondo king, a chicken king, all with powers, Lord. There's Burger King as well in Cape Town, Lord. I mean, Dave. I just wanted to know, do Corsas have a king? Yes. Ringo. But what about England, Dave? They have a queen and a prime minister. How do you explain that? She's just a figurehead. We are too diverse. One second we're praying to the ancestors, then the next we're praying to Jesus. Because when people pray, do they send the prayer to the ancestors and then they CC Jesus? After you slaughtered, you say, ancestors, Jesus. 
this hotel uche su. <laughs> so, so David, what what unites us then? They did a survey across all races and found that the only thing that South Africans have in common is we all love Nelson Mandela and we all think that Bafana Bafana is sh Easy on Bafana Bafana, Dave. They could still qualify for the World Cup on a technicality. Well, at least white folks no longer have to pretend to support Bafana Bafana. They can just come out and say they support England or whoever it is that they truly support. Because white folks have no idea who plays for Bafana Bafana, but they have to pretend for the sake of Nelson Mandela and nation building. Well, Dave, you claim to be such a, a big Bafana Bafana fan. Can you name five players for Bafana Bafana? Thank you, Lord. Ah, Dave, is that Bruce Lee behind there? Bruce who? Bruce Lee, karate guy. Never heard of him, Lord. Oh. Never heard of him. Okay, thank you very much, David Kabuka, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see him next week. Some among us in South Africa are suffering from amnesia. For those of you who really suffer from amnesia and have forgotten what amnesia is, it's a partial lapse of memory. Just watch this. We must never leave the NC. We must do the DNA. Our blood will come out black, green, and gold. Your blood, Baba. My man, that's extremely ANC. Extremely. Eh? You can't be more ANC than that. But when you are suspended, your farm is gone, your house, your brightling, everything is repossessed, and Tokyo is not picking up your calls. Ah, green, black, and gold will change to red, Baba. Red. Eh? Red for boiling hot in anger. Eh? Anger. That NEC is, uh, is not a, a political national executive committee is not different from a, a committee of Induna in a village where Induna comes and speaks and all of them clap hands and Induna leaves. I will never serve an organization where I don't have an opinion. By the look of it, the boy from Sishako is finally done with the ANC. Your BFF Juju has started a party called EFF where all we need is your EFT. That's like Ronald McDonald saying, I'm done with McDonald's. I'm starting my own chisanyama. Heck, even his boy Figil Mbalula, who Juju fought hard for to be the new secretary general of the ANC, is calling Juju's political party political suicide. We have another word for it, Figil. It's called saving your own ass at the expense of your oldest and best comrade. Malema finds himself alone when even his once best friend, Ronald Lamola, who obviously knows where his bread is buttered, has distanced himself from Malema, saying that Malema is stealing youth league ideas. Ronald, if you believe in an idea, shouldn't you just be happy that someone is pushing it forward and it's happening? It shouldn't matter where it came from, rather the fact that it's happening, right? We are trying to accomplish a certain agenda here. So, it shouldn't matter. Unlike many former comrades, we here at LNN care about Julius Malema. That's why we created an advert for Juju's new political party. You know why? Because all, your, all his friends have deserted him. And because Juju has kept us alive as a show for such a long time, we owe him this favor. Do you want a piece of the pie? If you come here and say nationalization can't work, then you went to research something wrong. Then roll with this guy. He changes minds. Hands off, President Suma. Hands off. Pants for Jacob Suma. Pants. President Mbeki had to leave at some point. We didn't think that the, his the departure will then be a departure of the priority of the African agenda. The problem in this country is Tabo Mbeki and his people. Well, his own. A lot. An eco-friendly leader. We're going to march to Pretoria. A lover of white people. <laughs> a hater of white people. Don't come here with that white tendency. Well, a leader who is neutral with white people. It is time for a revolution. Don't you know? Talking about a revolution. Because finally the tables are starting to turn. Talking about revolution. Talking about the revolution. Oh, oh, oh.
BFF. We're waiting for your EFT. Juju, we've got your back here on Late Night News. You'll thank us later. Don't worry about those things. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the break with Mr. Chester Missing, who interviews Tony Ehrenreich. Find us on Twitter. Find us on Facebook. Send us emails, and we'll see you after this break. Welcome back this week. Mr. Chester Messing had the opportunity to interview Kosato's Tony Ehrenreich. Let's see how it went down. I am talking to ex-male model and Kasatu Western Cape Regional Secretary Tony Arena. Hey man, what's going on? Hey Chester, it's all good. Nice to have you in Cape Town for a change. It's an honor. It is an honor. I tell you, I tell you. Are you one of the workers? Have you ever had a job? I have. I'm a motor mechanic by trade. Is Kasatu in the Western Cape just a Tony Arena fan club? No, absolutely not. Kusato has 260,000 members and they call the shots as to what Kusato should do. But we I'm don't just hear about them, we only hear about you. Why is that? Well, they employ me as their voice and as their mouthpiece, so I'm meant to say what the issues are. So, so like, I am the Chester Missing of Late Night News, you are the Chester Missing of Kusato? Pretty much, pretty much. La, la, la. So whose hand is... I won't go there. Yo, yo, <laughs> it looks like do more to me. Listen, <laughs> seriously, though, seriously though uh, with, reg with regard to Comrade Vavi, how many backstabbings a day is the maximum allowed? Well, I think we've got to put a limit to the amount of backstabbing, but we've got to put a limit to how we conduct our politics in South Africa. There's a That's need true. for a That's series true. of what, what should be changed? We must remember our ethics and our values and the principles that Mandela stood for. Let's go for real issues. Are you against e tolling in Cape Town or are you for them? Were you against e tolling? But I mean, you're in Kasatu and in the ANC, so I mean, that question must want to blow your mind. I mean, your head must be literally microwaving itself. Not at the moment, because at the moment, the ANC and Kasatu both is against e tolling but in the Western Cape. But that's completely hypocritical. So basically, the, 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 the ANC in the Western Cape agrees with the DA in Gauteng. So your underpants are probably blue. Uh, in that sense, we must say we're on the same side in respect of e tolling. You keep complaining about the super rich. You know, they should pay for the roads, not ethos. Who exactly do you mean by the super rich? Well, the super rich are those who in South Africa earn a fortune in excess of 10 or 20 million rand on their books. Kulubuse and Cyril, do you mean? Kulubuse and Cyril. Absolutely, Cyril. let's tax them more. The super rich should but be taxed. But why are you in business? Them. Why is Kasatu in an alliance with these people? Surely you must get rid of them. Kick them out. They are the unwanted people on your doorstep. There's the poo thrower catchers. There are some in the ANC who has strong business interest and who are seduced by business. The majority are seduced by the value values of the ANC, and yeah, that's what they pursue. Your deputy president was on the board of Lonman. I mean, come on, boss, you can't. That's not integrity. Well, he was on the board of Lonman, and I hope he made sure that the workers got a better deal there. In spite Mind of the right. workers having gone on strike, he yeah. raised a number of important issues. That's got to be put on the agenda all the time. Look at the farm workers, boss. The Minister of Labor has set the minimum wage of 105 rand. Are you seriously happy with that amount? Not at all. Nobody can survive on 105 rand. It's got to be a decent wage. So why are you still with the ANC spending 200 million on Nkandla? I mean, do you realize that at 105 rand a day, the Nkandla cash could keep one farm worker employed for 5,000 years. Literally the same guy, including public holidays. Because we've been able to move the wages up from 69 rand to 105. Now, it's nowhere where it should be, but it's a huge improvement. And we've done that in collaboration with government. We've yeah. got to do more. Just turn off the cameras, turn off the cameras. Do you deny that the reason the rand dropped recently was because the Guptas closed their Edgar's accounts? <laughs> no. I'm not going to take away any answer that's simple. You need to answer truthfully. Not at all. There are all kinds of international factors that have a bearing on the rand. No, 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 no. I am absolutely certain it was a Gupta's comrade. I think you're in denial. The DA want to give Obama freedom of the city. When the DA finally decides to give a black guy, finally decides to give a black guy freedom, why do you oppose it? Well, I think the only issue that was opposed was the procedure that we followed. But there were also a number of issues that Obama has to answer. What's happening in Guantanamo Bay? Yeah. Why are they continuing to support the practices of Israel against Palestine? So cool. there's a whole range of issues Absolutely. that so, affect our country. Absolutely. So it looks like you're using it as a political kicking ball so that you can just cause rubbish with the DA. The DA it's is like the political version of throwing poo. The DA needs credibility, so they try and associate with anybody who has, and this was just a mistake on their part. Yeah. If national government deals with Obama, we think that those are important relations, but we've got to raise the difficult issues also. Okay, that's very good. Very good, Tony Erreich. You're a ninja. Go out there, go out there and raise the prices of farming what's...
Well, thank you very much, Jess. That was great to be talking to you. <laughs> yeah, I know you do smell Dot like sense. worker. I agree. Yeah, no, go fix a car. Whatever. This is a mechanic. This doesn't look like a mechanic. He looks like Zoolander. Ah, Tony Aaron Rehiwawa, the man who's against bike lanes. Ah, there you have it, South Africa. He has spoken. Now it's time for the Morale Index, where we evaluate the country's morale based on recent events. It's your turn, Mr. Deep Fried Man. If you're having a bad week, forget your troubles for a while. If you're having a bad week, here's something to make you smile. Before you get depressed, before you get blue, realize that there's someone who's having a worse week than you. They make fun of her weight, they make fun of her clothes. So spare a thought for Lindy Mazibuko. Every time she opens her mouth to speak, the ANC calls the fashion police. And if you're having a bad week, don't start whining There's someone who's doing even worse than you That's your silver lining When days are dark Allies are few So spare a thought For Juju With no more farm And no more friends Except for Floyd Shivambu And there's someone whose day Is even darker so spare a thought for Bernard Parker He scored the greatest goal I've ever seen Too bad that it was for the wrong team So no matter how bad your week has been so far Remember that there are those less fortunate than you are Thank you, Deep Fried Man. That's it for the week. Find us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, send us emails. Goodbye, see you next time. Next time is next week, right? Makes sense. News that moves. ENCA.com.